everybody. Let's see if people are going to pop on. And um, I was just finishing up with my um, multidimensional group, which is a six month program, a summer for a year. And what we were talking about a number of things. One was about money and people's responses and reactions to different aspects about having money, receiving money, spending money, pricing for services or programs. Um, and all sorts of things, not surprisingly, all sorts of emotions and reactions came up and we were working on purpose with looking at what's here for people. And some of the things that came up were around uh, shame, different aspects and about different parts and things of, of um, money. One of my coaches said, how you do money is how you do everything. And I said that to my group tonight and they were like, really? So it was just a very interest. it's such an interesting perspective to look at that. And one of the things that came up, there were statements like, um, I have to give my soul away to make money. And, and that's such a big feeling and so many different tendrils of things that are related to this, right? And somebody else remembered something that her mom used to say that money is the root of all evil and if you have money, uh, it's bad. Like people with money are bad. So these kinds of belief systems really affect how we receive money, how uh, make money, what we're willing to ask for, not willing to ask for. One of the things that she said is that when, as that, when that was in place, she purposefully would undersell herself. And so I work with a lot of women who are entrepreneurs, people who are in transition from one business to another, uh, people who are looking to come out of jobs and into a new area of work and when across the board for this would go for anybody but when you are an entrepreneur and you have these types of <clears throat> um, under the ground they're often underground belief systems running the show they run the show they run how you function and it's so powerful in keeping us down and keeping ourselves small in not being able to fully come into ourselves. We might have the most beautiful body of work, but if you're not believing in it and if you can't charge what you're worth, if you can't decide on your pricing, if you're staying on the fence, if you're not even able to ask for money, if you're not able to uh, create pricing for things if you're not able to keep money because you've got these things running in the background it makes it really hard to survive financially it makes it hard to feel good and competent and confident about yourself if you've got something like um, money is the root of all evil and you want to be able to generate enough income that you can support yourself well what's that what's running in, in underground saying you can't because if you do somehow it's bad you're bad it's evil you're going to be like those people who have money who are bad and so these kinds of things end up ruling us really you know like are you l-i-n-g like sh directing the show instead of you being able to uh let those how those things are moving through you and and being able to release them, dismantle them, let them dissolve, help the whole network and patterning of how that's connected into what you're doing uh, 
to be able to move that. So from there, we got into a conversation about shame. Somebody said that um, one of the things that she was feeling sticky about and that she was shifting or sifting, wanted to sift through, was that she realized that uh, she was shamed like in a way of for not excelling like she wasn't supposed to excel we often have double standards like miss like different information you know contradictory things like we want you to be the best of who you are but don't excel don't get too far somebody else was talking about not not being able to go beyond what their father had been able to do um that it was a a whole intricate network within the family and and sometimes those kinds of thoughts are underneath the surface so they're not always readily visible so when we were talking about shame and uh, working with going into it and different aspects of it I shared something about when I was working with the Akashic Records uh, a while back and I had been triggered about something and a whole big pocket about shame had had arisen and I was inquiring about it it's very often we don't want to go into those feelings because we think more bad is going to happen that feeling those things is like the worst thing that we can do that we're scared of what else will uncover we don't want to feel bad we don't want to feel more shame when we think that that will get stuck in that type of a place, right? And in this case, and with the help of the Akashic Records, I was able to go in. <coughs> Excuse me. And I kept asking questions and bit by bit things were uncovered and I really didn't know exactly what was underneath this this big reaction and this overwhelming heavy sense of guilt and shame <clears throat> it was predominantly shame and so I as I was asking questions and and uh, went into like a deep healing state I started receiving information and here's what I got I wanted to share this with you because what on what I gradually uncovered was so unexpected and so profoundly healing that uh, I it's still moving through me my understanding of it it's still working through me it's it continues to open inside of me and my understanding and my ex how I experienced this shift because a whole network of how shame was holding in my system through this process just literally released. <clears throat> and so I heard, when I asked about shame, I heard this internal voice say, come in and say, I am Gabon. And I was like, Gabon? What's Gabon? And the first thing I thought of, I know that there's a country in Africa. I was like, what do you shame have to do with this country in Africa? I wasn't getting the connection at all. There were no dots that were connecting at that moment. And I kept hearing, I kept inquiring. A lot of times people, when they even get to that spot, will just stop. I don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense. What's this have to do with me? It doesn't have anything to do with shame that I can see. I'm just hearing things, you know, and dismiss it. And I kept going. I kept choosing to keep going. And I heard, I am immovable. I am who has been underneath shame. Well, that piqued my curiosity quite a bit. I still didn't understand what immovability had to be doing with uh, shame. And then I kept hearing, I am sturdy. 
and stout, strong, stable, sanctuary, earth mama, matron. I still wasn't under putting all the pieces together, so I kept asking. I am Gabon, a smart and cool, sovereign person. I did a little bit of, I, I kind of n investigated a little bit and I found out that the word Gabon comes from a Portuguese meaning of cloak. And I was puzzled again. I was like, well, what is shame and my feeling this has to do with stoutness, sturdiness, sanctuary, earth mama? What does it have to do with the meaning of cloak? And this is what I heard. And this is when things really started to unwind and unravel and, and come into the deeper places. This is a cover, a mask, a disguise, a shroud, veil, to alter oneself in order to conceal the identity or true nature. Shame was the cloak to conceal true identity of being sturdy, strong, stable, sanctuary, sovereign, inside yourself. To shroud over time the mysteries of a sanctuary deep within of strength, sturdiness, and stability. And so then I asked, what, why did these qualities need to be cloaked in shame? To be strong was dangerous. And I was like, well, when I heard that, I was thinking, well, this isn't just about me and my childhood because that really wasn't making sense. It was, uh, it felt like it was branching into more than just me. It was probably, you know, although I wasn't seeing specific past lives, it had a past life quality to it, but it also felt like I was opening into not only my shame, but shame across um, like a collective consciousness of shame, collective feeling of shame that went just, you know, that went beyond me. To be a strong woman was dangerous. To be sturdy was ill-fitting for a woman. To be stable had witch powers which were perceived as dangerous. To be sanctuary inside, even that was a threat to some. And so, woman filled with shame. To hide the light of strength, which led to a sense of sovereignty and not being controlled. She filled with shame to hide the light of stability, which led to a taproot of unwavering commitment to light, an unwavering commitment to light. She filled with shame to hide the light of sturdiness that led to unwavering strengths and stability. She filled with shame to hide the light of being stout, of not being moved. Of not being moved from that commitment to light no matter what. She said, I am Gabon, the cloak of darkness, leading into the mysteries through strength, through stability sturdiness, stoutness, sovereignty. I am here to be your door home. Not what I was expecting to hear about shame. 
under the cloak of darkness, we venture home into the vastness of all that is, of the creative forces of good. She said to me, I am you. I am your gateway of strength. I am Gabon, transcending time and space. I am across dimensions, showing as a figure of strength and sturdiness, stability, sanctuary, stoutness, sovereignty. And so I ask to be filled with this strength, this sturdiness, this goodness, and I felt I am Gabon come into every, the center, the core of every chakra in my body, one by one. When I said out loud, I am Gabon, a huge sturdying strength and stability came in and I could see her and I felt this energy was like this phenomenal healing coming from the inside all throughout me. I am Gabon, the light of strength. I am Gabon, sovereignty. I am Gabon, stability, a taproot of unwavering commitment to light. I am Gabon, sturdiness, unwavering strength and stability. I am Gabon, stout, not to be moved. I am Gabon, sanctuary, unwavering. I am your doorway to home. Under the cloak of darkness, we venture into home, into the vastness of all that is, all of the great and creative forces of good. I am you. I am your gateway of strength, transcending time and space, traveling across dimensions, showing as a figure of strength, sturdiness, stability, stoutness and sanctuary, sovereign. I am Gabon. And so one of the many things that I got with all of this is that sense when I teach animal communication, I talk about this, about when you're sensing something to continue following the thread and to not just stop when something may not seem to make apparent sense. I found this as I go into the Akashic Records and give readings and healings that just because a piece of information comes in and it might not make sense to me doesn't mean stop there and to relay that information to another. And who knew what was underneath this cloak, this incredibly powerful, potent sense of shame that has this magnificence, this incredible strength and amazing messages that are coming through and that can live through me instead of that sense of, uh, I've done something wrong. There's something dramatically gone wrong here that I cannot show what else is here. That I know is not just me, that I know is shared by many. And so if that is shared by many, the sense of shame, then this which is underneath, this can also be shared. So, that is what I wanted to share with you tonight. And you can find me on my website, oneheartheelingcenter.com. The Akashic Records, you can, if 
uh, find me under Akashic Record Readings under One Heart Healing Center. And I would love to sit with you and support you through whether it's shame or something else, something that you want to be able to uncover that's been keeping you smaller, that's been keeping your light dimmed so that you don't excel in doing creating the life that you know is possible. Let's see what really is possible for you. So, mwah.